All right, I am here with Canada's new lead national champion, Sophie Butendijk, joining us from Victoria, BC. After a week of recovery, Sophie, thanks so much for uh, for coming in uh, for a little bit just to talk. How are you feeling after, first of all, after a great event, but now after you've had a chance to like chill out a little bit, grow some skin back, stuff like that? Um, well, I'm super excited. It still feels kind of weird, I guess. <laughs> But it's been really nice having a little break, um, and I feel so much more motivated now to train. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's been good. That's awesome to hear. It was a, it was kind of a weird event. Like first of all, having both running at the basically the same time for the for the first time, doing bouldering for two days, a single day off, and then lead for two days. How did you manage that? I don't know. I don't know if you were like training specifically for nationals, but like. I know a lot of people ended the comp pretty bloody uh, and very tired. How was that experience for you? Yeah, it it was definitely a lot harder than I thought it would be. Like after bouldering, I woke up the next day and like my whole body was so sore, like every muscle, like walking was painful. I, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to compete like in lead. This is going to be really difficult, but after the first day, I think um, uh, I wasn't as sore after doing my first few climbs. So I think like moving helped a bit. But yeah, at first it was it was really rough and my skin was in, in rough shape. But I think everybody was in the same boat. So we all got there together. <laughs> if they hadn't been back to back, would you have only considered like competing at one of the nationals like I don't, I don't know if you're kind of like trying to focus on a particular discipline like did you do both just because it was convenient and you were already in Toronto or uh, uh, are you like happy to do both trying to do uh, both disciplines seriously um I I really enjoy both I was definitely a little more focused on bouldering um this year but yeah I would have definitely done both um even if they would have been at different times Okay. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't quite sure because I know like in Ontario, obviously, it was a lot of people like, well, I'll do both because they're here at this time. Whereas if you put mm -hmm. both in BC, they might have picked like one or the other kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me. Like, I, I mean, we're, we're talking because of your performance in lead, um, which is a huge <laughs> deal. Like you've you've got plenty of national gold medals from the youth career, but. For, for your open career, I understand this is the first gold medal. But um, let's just talk about bouldering because it came first. It was kind of a weird round uh, or just a, like a, sorry, a weird comp, the three rounds. Am I right to say that like qualifiers probably felt pretty easy? And then by the time you got to finals, it was like these boulders are like just, well, a few of them seemed so close to being perfect. Uh, but it seemed like a really discouraging finals after maybe a really easy qualifier round. What was the experience like in bouldering? Um, yeah, qualifiers was definitely significantly easier. Um, semis was a really hard round as it usually is. Um, and finals was pretty similar to that, which I was actually happy that it was hard because I've found in the past it's been like too easy in finals. And then it just comes down to attempts, which I'm not as, I don't like that too much. Um, so I was really happy with, with the boulders. I thought they were all super cool. Um, but yeah, going into finals, I felt I felt a lot more pressure, and so it, it made it harder for me because I I was going in in like a good position, so I kind of wanted to maintain that, and I think I felt a little more pressure than in the other rounds. The like, could you could you have every all the women could have asked for an easier or like a, a round that was slightly better for them, especially like maybe just in terms of of reach in some cases or not mm -hmm. having to jump like quite as far to the right on problem two or three or something like that um aside from like what some people might say were just like root setting errors did you feel like it was approximately in your in your wheelhouse of style or or like strength um or or was the stuff kind of um not just uh not just all around hard but for you difficult in particular um i i thought they were all really good um i mean the the one slab climb in finals was just weird i i was like i don't even know i don't know how to do this um because slab is, is usually my weakness as well so i kind of saw it and <laughs> i wasn't super excited about it. but um i yeah i felt pretty good on the other boulders um yeah there wasn't anything that like really um stood out to me um as being 
yeah, particularly, I don't know, difficult, I guess. Well, what about the lead comp then? Because the, the, the two words that came to my mind when you were in the interview with Bonnie and then on the podium was like delirious disbelief. (laughs) And I wasn't sure if you were surprised or just like happy it was over because it was such a long period or something, or or maybe you just hadn't expected that kind of outcome. But uh, tell me what you're feeling at the end of that. And, and why, why uh, you just, you seemed very happy, but also like a, thank goodness this is over and I can't believe I'm here kind of way. (laughs) So what about the lead? Yeah, that that's pretty much it. I I was like, yeah, by even the beginning of the comp, I was like, wow, like this this is gonna be really hard, and I'm kind of ready for this to be over. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I guess I, I I definitely wasn't expecting to win. Um, because there's a lot of other strong climbers that I I kind of felt like had a really good chance. Like, yeah, Emmy and Babette are super strong and. I was like, oh, they're they're definitely get farther than me, and then yeah, and then they flipped, and I was like, this is what? <laughs> um, so yeah, I was pretty surprised, and yeah, it's really exciting to yeah, I've never done this all before, even been on the podium, so it was kind of surreal in the moment. What did you make of that finals route? Um, because it was, I, I think you mentioned as well, but obviously you just see from the results and from, from like you said, Emmy and Babette and Bronwyn out first, which like set a crazy tone for the broadcast was like, oh my God, this third clip could be a killer. And it ended up like being really impactful on the, on the end of the competition. Uh, how did you enjoy climbing it? Was it? Was it the kind of thing where you're like, you know, if I climb that route again, I could have fallen there just as easily or, or did you feel like pretty confident um, going up that thing? I think what really helped is that I, I, I felt really relaxed going into it because I was kind of like, you know what, this, this is the last day. I'm tired. I, you know, I don't know. So I kind of went into it pretty relaxed, which was good because it, it was so hard the whole way. It was just so like, you could easily mess up in so many spots. Um, yeah, I, I would be scared to try it again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, that, that one move, um, where they fell was super committing. Um, yeah. And I feel like I kind of just got lucky and and just did it right. Um, it was one of those things where it did feel like, you know, there were a lot of different betas that you could certainly make that clip from, but mm -hmm. it looked like if you had a particular body position psychologically, you just, you accidentally kind of wrecked yourself. You went down the wrong alley and there was no way out. It was, it was kind of crazy how much it affected those climbers in that moment. So, yeah. 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 It was super technical. Um, I think like training for bouldering definitely helped me a lot there because it, it almost felt just like a long boulder problem. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where have you been training out of this last uh, little bit? Like uh, COVID, we'll talk about COVID more specifically in a second, but leading up to this competition, like was nationals a target competition for you or do you have like bigger goals over this like next like six-ish months? Is this what you were focusing on? Uh, Yeah, like my training um, for the last few months has been uh, focused on nationals. Um, And I've been training at Boulder House in Victoria. pretty much exclusively. Um, and yeah, um, I'm not too sure who my goals are yet. I think I'll probably see if there's some North American cuts that are close by that I can do. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, just kind of playing it by ear right now. I'm not, I'm not too sure yet what my goals are for the future, but I'm definitely very excited to keep training you uh you said you're you're in victoria doing school and stuff how how deep are you into your program like i'm guessing you're still in like a like bachelor's territory right like on under or yeah undergrad yeah 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 i'm in the middle of my second year right now gotcha. um i've been taking it pretty slow <laughs> well nobody wants to do anything in covid like if that's when you yeah. started like yeah nobody's nobody's had yeah. sight at that yeah. point um, during COVID, though, it seemed like you got around and were climbing a lot. Like, uh, did I see in the states and and uh, some like uh, like shallow water soloing, some uh, <laughs> some pretty chill bouldering on your Instagram? Like, uh, how was COVID for you climbing wise? Did you? It seemed like you kind of got to like maybe um, do a bunch of stuff that might not normally fit into a climbing calendar if the comp season had run a normal way and if the school calendar had run a normal way. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, COVID worked out pretty good for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, uh, it, it was, it was good. Um, cause yeah, I was living in Whistler at the time. So I was really close to Squamish and like all this really good outdoor climbing. Um, so, and yeah, I wasn't, I, I took a year off competing. So I was able to just like climb outside and, yeah, it was it was really good time for me actually. <laughs> yeah, I felt really lucky to be there at that time. For uh, for Ontario kids, like I I um, I coached a couple kids that were basically the same age as yourself. So a lot of them, I, I got to witness them have like a, a fairly like stunted entry into outdoor climbing because there's not that much around here to really ease yourself into and get familiar with it for BC people and Alberta people, like depending on where you're at, it seems like it's something you, you get into a lot earlier in your career. Um, uh, man, I completely forget where I was going with this question, I'm completely <laughs> botching this, but whatever, it's fine. We'll just fake it. Um, if, uh, I'm going to transition out of this, tell me, tell me about Whistler and the gym you were climbing at out of there, because it seemed like what, what took you to Whistler, I guess is the question. Um, well, school going online, definitely. Um, I did, I did like a semester online and I was like, this is awful. I can't, I can't do this for years. It's horrible. Um, and then I just applied to, um, Whistler Blackcomb and got a job. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm just going to go do a ski season here and just change it up. Cause I, I kind of knew that I wanted to take a break from competing. Um, and I always wanted to work at a ski resort. So I thought, okay, this is a really good time for me to do that. Um, so yeah, I just moved there and worked there for a year and it was really refreshing. Um, and I came back feeling a lot more excited to compete again. The, where I was kind of leading with this was, um, you've in your coaching scenario right now is also online, right? My understanding is you're coach, you're, um, working with Christian core, um, online. Yeah. And you had done that in the past too, if I remember right with like Matt Chapman and maybe some other people. Um, mm -hmm. so I was thinking like Whistler doesn't have like a huge, like strong competitive training climbing scene in like little Whistler. You have to get out to the city for that. And so anyway, this is a transition to asking about how you have enjoyed trying to train when your coaching is online and at a distance. Like, it seems like it's, it's not like, an ideal scenario for a lot of people. For some people, it's a necessity though, because there's not always great coaching or the type of coaching you need based on where you are. So could you talk a little bit about your experience doing that, uh, doing that online coaching and, and why it's worked for you or what you've gotten from it? Like how it, how it works out? Um, I guess like the, the main reason that I, I've, I've done, done it that way is just because there, there's not a whole lot of coaches out there and um, the really good ones are far away. So I guess long distance coaching is just what's worked for me. Um, and also I, I, I guess I kind of, I don't mind training on my own and kind of like making my own schedule and that. So just having someone who can like um, build a plan and that I can talk to periodically just seems to work really well. Um, yeah. And yeah, I worked with Matt Chapman before COVID and then didn't have a coach really during COVID. I just kind of did my own thing. And then um, this year I've started working with Christian, which has been really good. How, uh, tell me about Christian. Cause he's the kind of guy when I like, I try to talk to him, he's like, cause I, I just want to ask him questions about stuff from 20 years ago, because that's like my, my <laughs> interest area. And I don't think he really wants to, um, if he just doesn't like, doesn't want to talk about the past or, or feels like he has nothing interesting to say, but tell me about him as a coach. Uh, like the people that work with him really do seem to like him a lot. And of course he's got tremendous experience competitively and just as a climber. So, so tell me about that relationship between the two of you and, and what he brings. Um, it's really good. Um, I like that, like, I can always chat with him and we can change little things if things need to be tweaked. Um, and then sometimes I'll, I'll want to climb outside and he's always like super supportive of that. If I like decide to take a day off and climb outside, which makes me kind of happy that I, um, yeah, that he's, he's supportive of that. And, um, but yeah, it's been really good. He's super nice and very like approachable and, um, his training, like, I feel like I'm always being pushed, um, which is really good. 
Um, yeah. What do you, um, like at some point you would have had to reach out and say, Hey, I, I would like this coaching. What was it that you felt like you were missing? I guess, like, do you have, uh, any particular trouble? Like, I think for some people it's like finding confidence in the training plans that they have for themselves. Uh, or sometimes you just want like a different perspective on, on your climbing. If, if you're, if you're not sure if you're in the right spot, like what, why did you reach out to not just for Christian, but for Matt in the past as well? Um, I guess I, I heard a lot of good things from other people and I knew that like he coached a lot of other strong climbers, um, just had a good reputation and, um, yeah, I think, I think Matt just, he didn't have time anymore because he's coaching a lot of different people. Um, so yeah, I, I knew about Christian and I didn't really know of anyone else who I thought was like, um, at the same level. Um, sure. so so yeah, I decided to reach out and it worked out really well. That's awesome. Um, you kind of you kind of mentioned how you're not really sure where your goals are at, and I totally get that, especially after a big win. Um, mm-hmm. Something that's going to happen though is like, hey, you just won nationals. Here's your invitation to the like the high performance camps. Here's your points for the continuous national ranking, and and all those pieces will come in, into place, kind of nudging you towards. You know, maybe you you go further this season and you try and do World Cups and things like that, which you really haven't done in a couple of years. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know so many other climbers from your time in youth climbing where there comes a time where you're like, you know, I don't want to take climbing any further than I'm at right now. And a Mm -hmm. lot of people have trouble confidently making a decision on where they want to stop and how far they want to push it and what they want to do this year compared to like last year or things like that. Um, how are you feeling in terms of your mind space, in terms of your balance of like what climbing means to you and what part of your life, uh, it occupies? Like, do you, do you feel like at peace with where you're at in climbing and you're happy to balance it with school and and the rest of life? Or are you feeling a little bit of pressure in one way or the other? Um, I, I mean, I'm definitely at a point where I, I, I definitely want to get my school done and it's, I've been able to, keep training and doing that at the same time it's been okay um and yeah I, I I'm really enjoying competing right now so I'm I'm gonna keep competing for the next little while um and maybe eventually do world cups again I don't know if I feel ready yet but I think maybe in the next few years I would really like to try to do some of those again um yeah I don't know I I guess I'm going to kind of see how I feel at the other competitions. Um, I feel more ready because I've only done like a few, I guess, since I, my like break from last year. Um, so I kind of want to do a bit more training and feel a little bit more, um, yeah, a little stronger, I guess. Do you, uh, you, like you did a, a couple world cups back when you were like, cons- like kind of just barely out of high school, I think. Is there anything about that where you like, you miss something about it or you feel like you have unfinished business? Um, or is it like so much of climbing where it's just, it's fun to be with other people that like to climb and, and you get to do it yourself? Like, is there, is there a little bit of like, you want, you want to achieve something out there or is it just like good memories, want to do something new with people? Oh, definitely both. Like I, I, I love the climbing community and I always, it's always just so fun seeing everyone. It's like a reunion. I love it so much. Um, and yeah, I did do a few world cups. I think I was like 18 or 19. Um, but I, I, I just realized the difference in like level, like world cups are just like such another, yeah, they're so much harder. So I kind of decided that I, I want to feel like I don't know, more prepared next time, um, next time I do one, but I would love to travel and it's a great excuse to travel. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're right about the, the preparation thing is especially, I I don't know what your situation is, but when you start to realize like, oh, sometimes it's expensive or this or that, and it can feel a little bit like, oh man, (laughs) I'm not sure if I, if I put the work into this one. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. let me, um, yeah, let me just ask you to kind of finish it up. Like you, you got to be in Toronto to get to see all these people. So I'm just wondering if you wanted to offer just like a, a shout out to anybody or a quick thank you or, or anything like that to anybody after this win. Um, uh, now that you've kind of gotten to see everybody again uh, after COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there, I don't know. There's so many people that to thank, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
but definitely my coach though um he was there and it was really nice to have him there and yeah that was amazing um obviously all the setters and all of that it was like it seemed a little chaotic at times so like especially like all the bleeding during bouldering no kidding yeah <laughs> like, was, were you part of that by the way were you one of the <laughs> i actually i i only started bleeding on my i think it was my last attempt on the last climb so it was really good timing for me. <laughs> That's crazy. Guy said the same thing. Guy was like, yeah, I only ever start bleeding on the very last climb of a competition. I was like, what, yeah. what's in the water with you BC guys? That's pretty, uh, pretty really lucky. Know. Well, that's cool. I just want to say congratulations on the on the gold medal at an open uh, lead nationals. It's a huge deal. I hope you feel like you accomplished a lot because you did. Um, and thank you very much for for talking for a little bit on a Saturday night. Uh, for those of you watching, thanks for watching. You can find more content like this on the Plastic Weekly YouTube channel. So make sure you like it, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.